<laughs> oh, hi. I'm Analytical. And if your website doesn't work on phones, then you're not doing drag web development. The majority of internet users are looking at a browser on their phone. So we need to make sure our website is going to be mobile friendly. Sure, the Monikart soundboard we've been working on looks great on this laptop monitor. But when we shrink it down, this is not cute. Who wants to look at that? Nobody. Let's take a look at our style file to make this more mobile friendly. All the images are going to be 24% of the screen width. But when our browser is going to be this small, we need to switch it up. We're going to use responsive design. When our page is this wide, all of the images will be 24% of the screen. When it's this wide, we want them to be 48. W3 Schools has a nice introduction on responsive design. And we're going to use a media query. There's a lot of information here, but I'm just going to use the most basic example. Do at media, and we want this to trigger when the width of the screen is no more than 800 pixels. So we'll use max width colon 800 pixels in parentheses. And then everything in here we can just treat like regular styling. So let's copy the first part of this image tag in here, close it up, and now instead of 24%, we want it to be 48%. So I'll save this and refresh. Oh, this is what we expect for our wide width, but let's see if it changes as we shrink it down. Oh, lovely. It is working as intended. It's just a much nicer view. You will also need this line. This will make sure that your phone will tell the browser how wide it actually is. And while we're in the head section, I guess I'll show you how to change the icon in your Chrome tab. We're actually going to use the link tag, just like we're using for the style sheet. Instead of the relationship being style sheet, it's going to be the shortcut icon. href is just going to be image and the locale icon that I downloaded online. The next thing we want to do is let people know that these are buttons. Well, right now it just looks like a grid of images, but in the final example, when we hover over them, it changes a little bit so you know that it's a button. And when you click it, it highlights it even more. We can style an image tag, but we can also style the image tag when it's being hovered over. And to do that, we'll type image colon hover. So there are a few states an element can be in. Let's check out W3Schools CSS Pseudo class. And here are all the examples. There are a lot. The ones we're going to use are hover for when we're hovering over the image and active for when it's being pressed down upon. We'll set the opacity here to maybe 0.8. And this is a great way to just make everything lighter without having to change a lot of other colors. Now when we hover over an image, it turns lighter. We should also add to the hover class cursor pointer. This will make it so that when we hover over an image, it will change the opacity and give us the mouse button. Now it really looks like a button, but still nothing happens when we click it. Brown cow, stunning! Except playing the clip. So we can also do image active, and we'll set the opacity of this to 0.5, so it's even lighter. Refresh and... <laughs> <laughs> we see it gets lighter. Now it really feels like a button. You may notice that when our website is very small, the images are kind of squished. And we want to show Monique in all of her original aspect ratio glory. Plus it would be nice to add text for each image so that when someone clicks it, they know what to expect. I'm going to put this image into a, a span with the class container. Inside this, we'll create another span called text overlay. Here we'll put the text we want to show. I went ahead and did some styling without you. And I don't want you to worry about a ton of this because some of it's a little more complicated, but here are two properties that I think might be interesting. We've got Z index as 100. That just makes sure that the text goes above the image. If we set this to negative one and refresh, then the text goes behind the image and we can't see it. You can actually see when I hover over it and do the overlay, you can see it's still back there. So we'll change this back. And then user select none. None, if I delete that and save that, then I'm able to still select this text, which is kind of annoying when you're trying to click the button. So we'll leave that. When we hover over the text and click, it doesn't trigger any opacity changes or playing the audio. Change that by just moving the on click onto the container. And then for all of these actives, we can use the container instead of the image. And we'll save this and it should look the same. America, my face is saying everything that you need to know. Great. I'll go ahead and finish this up off camera. So for the next video, we'll start with all of the text already loaded and we can focus on making our website super easy to share on social media and more accessible. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye.